Uh, thank you, Neil. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, to present just a very, very brief introduction about the role of atherosclerosis in uh, cardiovascular disease. And as many of you know, uh, atherosclerosis is uh, the major underlying cause for uh, stroke and heart disease. So I'm going to talk fir first a little bit about the, the nature of the disease. It's going to be very uh, brief. This is only 15 minutes. Then I'm going to talk about uh, uh, risk factors, uh, some of the controversies in high-density lipoproteins, which is thought to be the so-called good cholesterol. We'll talk first about LDL cholesterol, which I'm sure many of you are uh, familiar with. And uh, so what is atherosclerosis? It affects large and medium arteries. It's associated with endothelial dysfunction, inflammation, accumulation of lipids, mainly cholesterol, as it's ester and uh, calcium in the late stages of disease and cellular debris within the enema, giving the raised aspect of the atheroma uh, or the plaque formation. There's con uh, considerable vascular remodeling, uh, luminal obstruction that eventually can lead to, lead to ischemia, and the case where there is a thrombus formation that it will lead to a stroke or MI. And uh, of course, this uh, is associated with abnormalities in blood flow reduced oxygen supply, supply giving rise to uh, angina and other uh, problems. So this is from uh, Peter Libby and the evolution of atherosclerosis. And as you look at this, going from left to right, LDL, the culprit uh, lipoprotein, begins its business. And you know LDL cholesterol is a risk factor for disease, uh, cardiovascular disease. And uh, it begins its journey by uh, this uh, hypothesis, a response to injury, uh, injury from Russell Ross, developed quite a few years ago, and LDL moves from the lumen of the vessel into the subendothelial space. There, it's modified uh, and can give you uh, oxidized LDL, and the oxidized LDL is now then the uh, culprit in the subendothelial space, and then monocytes. Uh, migrate from the lumen into the subendothelial space, and within the subendothelial space, there at number five, it accumulates oxidized LDL or modified LDL and gives you a uh, foam cell. And these foam cells accumulate and in, in this uh, endothelium. At the same time, smooth muscle cells in the enema divide and mi migrate from the media. Uh, lastly. Uh, smooth muscle cells elaborate and accumulate extracellular ma matrix, giving this raised lesion shown there on the far right. And then in the latest stage, uh, there's uh, severe calcification, fibrosis, and programmed cell death. So <clears throat> this uh, is just an illustration of the uh, some uh, lesions in the P-Day study. In this, they looked at hundreds of individuals over time. And as you go from top to bottom, let's just look at the left column of uh, uh, lesions in the uh, uh, thoracic aorta. At early age, you already see, uh, as indicated, fatty streaks. And on the left, uh, oh, here I can show this. And here we have uh, prevalence of raised lesions on the right. So they're not really raised lesions when they're, they're young. But this is just an average of 500, say, uh, images superimposed to give you what is the average of what is happening to a lesion over decades. And so fatty streaks are in the vessel very early on in the uh, thoracic aorta, but they're not raised. They have no occlusion. And then as time goes by, these uh, get incredibly severe. And you notice this is only 30 to 34 years old. And this is uh, a teenager still has fatty streaks. But it really doesn't get serious in terms of raised lesions until they get up here to 30 to 34. And we know nothing about the habits of these people. These were just uh, uh, cross-sectional uh, data from uh, autopsies. And uh, finally, in, in this group here, uh, you have raised lesions that could be problematic. Uh, and this is what happens. Normal vessel, minimal. Uh, coronary artery disease, moderate, severe, and then uh, finally very severe and likely MI. So uh, plaque rupture 
is likely basis for acute coronary sy syndrome uh, or ACS. Patients with ACS present with unstable angina, uh, lack of oxygen to the uh, uh, heart, uh, later MI, sudden death. And it's thought to be the result of sudden coronary luminal occlusion. You see, get back, back, back. Oh, doesn't want to do that. Okay. And finally, the culprit lesion is a thin cap fiber atheroma, which is the site of uh, accumulation of uh, a thrombus, which is, gives the acute event. So I want to talk about this guy, Michael Machbuff, who was a uh, physician scientist in France in the 1920s. And as you can see, as all of you read Greek and French, he says, uh, I found it. It's HDL. I will be rich and famous. Of course, he was a little bit premature because this was not a ri ri uh, risk factor for many, many years. But he wrote his thesis on this, demonstrating the coexistence of lipids and proteins in the same particle in plasma. And uh, he, was a, he was a great athlete, and he's also operated a uh, radio operator in the Eiffel Tower during World War II. So this is the man, John Goffman, also a physician scientist at uh, uh, UCSF, and he worked on the Manhattan product, Project, and he says to J. Robert Oppenheimer, I've got two milligrams of plutonium. And, but then later he went on to study, uh, he became very interested in lipoproteins. And shown here is a bulky looking instrument, analytical ultracentrifuge, which he used to show in a large population of 2,000 Lawrence Livermore Lab employees uh, that heart disease was associated with low HDL and especially low HDL2. HDL occurs in two fractions, the denser fraction HDL3 and the less dense fraction, HDL2. And the less dense fraction is also uh, the larger, large one. Uh, uh, Paul Williams did a follow-up study of this. 29 years later, he got all the data, and the people, the survivors of this uh, study were contacted and showed that, yes, the uh, increased HDL2 was more atheroprotective than HDL3. So this, I think, uh, how many of you know that HDL is the good guy and the bad guy. And right, just a couple of hands up. Yeah, you know that? Okay. Well, it's really a controversial area. This is HDL, general lipoprotein model. You've got all these cholesterol esters in the middle, cholesterol on the surface, uh, some proteins shown here in white around here, and a few other neutral lipids. This is a hypothesis about atheroprotection by HDL. These are our macrophages in that subendothelial space we looked at, looked at earlier, and they contain transporters, uh, uh, ATP-driven transporters, that transfer cholesterol and lipids to APOA1. So now we're relieving the cholesterol burden on the macrophage in the subendothelial space. So this is supposed to shrink the lesion. These lipids then eventually become HDL. This forms an early form of HDL and it grows in the plasma, it's, just, it's esterified, gets larger, and then it's cleared in the liver by the scavenger receptor uh, class B type one. And this lowers cholesterol in the lesion. It doesn't necessarily lower it in, in plasma. And then there's a secondary transporter that transfers lipids and cholesterol dire directly to HDL. Um, so, this is, the, this is where the rest of it happened. Goffman showed that the HDL was a negative risk factor. Later, many of you know the Framingham Heart Study. Showed exercise increases HDL, elevated HDL cholesterol is associated with reduced CVD, and alcohol, which I study, uh, not just in the evenings, uh, is a cardioprotective factor because it forms acetate, which is a ligand for a G protein coupled receptor that occurs in adipocytes, and when you consume alcohol, it actually has an uh, insulinemic effect. So, so this is a cross-sectional study. This was an intervention, Helsinki Heart Study. Gemfibrosol, uh, PPAR alpha agonist, was shown to uh, reduce cardiovascular events. 
The issue here, though, is that it is also reduces plasma triglycerides. And plasma, it's actually more potent. It's just the statistical association wasn't as strong. So higher is better, right? And then we say, whoa, horsey. This is, and I'll go through this quickly, uh, not all patients with low HDL have uh, heart disease. Mouse models in which you increase that final receptor that removes cholesterol, HDL from the plasma, if you overexpress it, HDL cholesterol is lower, they don't get atherosclerosis. If you ablate it, they get atherosclerosis and they have very high HDL. Uh, the, there is um, CETP. Some of you may have heard CETP inhibitors. They raise HDL and uh, they do not prevent cardiovascular disease. And then, very interesting, there's a Mendelian, Mendelian randomization study showed an HDL raising gene did not associate, in a uh, large study, did not associate with uh, reduced risk. Uh, and even alcohol, uh, it, it appears that alcohol elicits effect not through HDL but something else. And that's going to be, and I think it is uh, adipocytes. Okay, so the model of atherosclerosis is uh, protection by this mechanism, transferring cholesterol here to here and to the liver, and it's converted to bile salts and excreted. This is a uh, part of a study from uh, Peter Jones, who runs the obesity clinic at the hospital, uh, which uh, we were uh, allowed to participate in. The idea is that that first event, the transfer of cholesterol from a macrophage to plasma is going to be good. Here is a control. We measured it for a group. Here is some, a group with metabolic syndrome. Their transfer is actually better. They have metabolic syndrome, and they, which is risk factor for cardiovascular disease, and yet they have better efflux to plasma. They lost weight in this group. They're back to normal and their efflux is the same as the normal. Therefore, actually correcting all those other issues of glucose, uh, hypertension, um, central obesity, et cetera, are more important than this little factor of cholesterol efflux to HDL. This shows, it's overwhelming. I'm only going to have you look at two panels. Down here, the association with that efflux is with the LDL proteins. ApoB containing proteins, and with non-HDL cholesterol. So it has nothing to do with HDL. It has only to do with these other uh, uh, lipoproteins that are thought to be, for years, have been thought to be associated with uh, atherosclerosis. And okay, lastly, kinetics. Where does HDL come in? The measured efflux as a function. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, two hours. Where did it go? It went here. It went to HDL. Later, HDL at the end, whoops, it's all over here. And so even though HDL is the in initial acceptor of cholesterol, ultimately it ends up over here. And that is good because HDL has a plasma lifetime of five days, LDL two to three days. So actually if you transfer it to LDL, you get rid of it faster than you transfer it to HDL. At the same time, here, here shows the disappear, the, the fitting this uh, curve that at time zero, most of the uh, cholesterol, 75% is in HDL. At the end, 70% ends up over here. And uh, the mechanism is shown here. Uh, somebody redid this slide for me. I, I hope it's visible. Initially, all these HDLs. HDL has a molarity that is 100 times the other lipoproteins put together, even though when you measure HDL, it's because it's so small. And a small particle with a, a large mass is going to give you high molarity. So everything goes to the HDL first, and then later transfers to LDL. And the transfer occurs in three minutes, and coming off of this, it takes 45 minutes. And so that's uh, the likely underlying mechanism. And it all ends up here on LDL, hopefully it goes to the liver. Uh, is this macrophage efflux 
uh, uh, diagnostic metric? Some say yes, and there's a big study, uh, it was in uh, NEJM, and somebody said no, and in ATVB studies said it was uh, not predictive. And um, I'm going to go to the last. Risk factors, smoking, hypertension, dyslipidemia, diabetes. Of course, genetics uh, are the new risk factors uh, we, we'd like to find them. And these aspects of endothelial dysfunction, and, which lead to heart failure, stroke, ACS, and sudden death. What are the therapies? Lipid lowering, uh, mainly LDL cholesterol, uh, ACE inhibitors, control uh, calcium channel blockers, controlling uh, uh, blood pressure, omega-3 fatty acids, which uh, reduce plasma triglycerides and uh, increase uh, clotting time. Uh, of course, glycemic control in those with uh, metabolic syndrome. Quit smoking, lose weight, exercise, and uh, did I put in consume alcohol? No. Uh, consume vinegar, which is the product of alcohol as acetate. And that's it. Thank you.